When it comes to fighting algae, honestly, live aquarium plants are one of your best defenses. So think of it like having a healthy front lawn full of grass. You know, they've got really strong roots, they're growing well, you're constantly cutting them. There's very little room for weeds to kind of come in there if everything is healthy. Versus if you have a really patchy lawn, it's really unhealthy, there's plenty of open spots where just bare dirt is there, of course, there's gonna be lots of opportunities for weeds to land on your lawn and take advantage of the situation. We wanna focus on growing really healthy plants that are going to outcompete the algae for the same resources they both use, you know, lighting and nutrients. And when they're really, really healthy, algae doesn't have a chance against them. But on the other hand, if the algae is winning and then now they're starting to coat the leaves on the plants and they're, you know, preventing the plants from getting enough light and nutrients, then there's a good chance your plants may not do well and may actually melt away and die. Hi, I'm Irene with Aquarium Co-op, and previously on my Algae Control for Beginners series, I talked about how to balance the lighting and the nutrients so that your plants have the best chance of doing well. However, there actually are a few key things you can do with the plants themselves to make sure you get a leg up on the competition against algae. So let me cover those for you. Tip number one is when you have a new planted aquarium, if at all possible, plant as densely as possible so that they will kind of consume all the excess nutrients in the water column. You may have seen these really beautiful aquascapes like the Iwagumi style, where it's primarily featuring the rock work in there. And then there's very few plants, like maybe a, a carpeting plant down below, but that's about it. Those type of aquariums that have really, really low plant load tend to be pretty hard to maintain and keep algae free. Versus let's say you have a Dutch style or a jungle style aquarium that's chock full of plants. It's gonna be a lot easier to keep algae away because again, you have so many plants there already consuming those resources naturally. Now, if you can't afford to get a lot of plants for your aquarium at first, I totally get it, been there before. What I like to do is kind of look around the house to see if there's any household plants that I can put in my aquarium, or maybe talk to your neighbor and see if they have any like pothos, for example, is a great one. All you need to do is kind of cut off a little branch there, stick it in the water, and it'll start growing roots and then absorbing all the excess nutrients in there. You have some kind of fast growing plant that is consuming the excess resources while you're you're waiting in for your aquarium plants to finally fill in. Tip number two is to choose some fast growing plants, especially ones that will suck up nutrients from the water column. And so one of my favorite algae busting plants, I would say is water sprite. Now I know a lot of people like to grow them in the ground. I like to grow it floating because kind of twofold, not only is it up near the surface, that allows it to kind of absorb carbon dioxide directly from the air, which means it will grow faster, consume more nutrients. And then as it grows, those really broad leaves end up providing shade, which is really good, especially in an immature aquarium. If you have low light plants down below, it can kind of help shade them and make sure they're not getting too much light. Other cool floating plants I like include you know, Amazon frogbit, dwarf water lettuce. Those are all really good ones. Most floating plants are gonna be pretty fast growing. Stem plants are also another type of plant that primarily takes its nutrients from the water column versus from the substrate. And so one of my favorites there would be Pogo Stem and Stellatus Octopus. I've definitely had a case where I had algae all over the aquarium. I inserted some Pogo Stem and Stellatus and then it ended up, it grew very well. It ended up taking like over half of the aquarium. However, none of those leaves had algae on them and it was like a total game changer for me. Other stem plants could be, you know, guppy grass, you can grow that floating, pearl weed. We just saw some videos from Corey where you can either plant it in the substrate or he has this like giant mass of it growing, I think in a guppy tank. So these fast growing plants are really good, especially for breeding tanks, because not only do they absorb the excess nutrients created by all the extra fish, but also they provide good hiding spots for them as well. Tip number three is kind of related. You know, if you're new to planted aquariums and you haven't done a lot of balancing of the light and nutrients, I would strongly, strongly recommend that you pick beginner plants. I know, I know the Java ferns and Amazon swords, dwarf aquarium lilies, a lot of these are very common looking and you may be looking for something a little rare, but beginner plants are just so good. The reason why they're so popular is because they're so easy to care for. They're really robust. They're gonna 
gonna do well for you. Versus, again, if you're a beginner and you start looking at some of these high-end aquascapes and you're like, ooh, I want this really delicate, high-maintenance <laughs> plant that maybe you don't have the experience or the knowledge to take care of properly, most likely it's not going to do well for you. And algae really loves attacking unhealthy plants. So I would definitely stay away from those, at least at first until you graduate. For most beginners, get those beginner plants, which most of them are on our website. We've kind of focused on those. Tip number four is plant placement. So definitely do your research because some plants are slow growing, you know, they don't like a lot of light, like anubias and mosses that are kind of known to be algae attractors versus other plants maybe are faster growing and they can stand a little bright light. Based on that, you can see where your light is in the tank and kind of move around those plants accordingly. So I was talking to my coworker, Lizzie, saying, how in the world do you keep Anubias without having them all covered with algae? And she said, well, for example, if she has a cube, let's say she'll put her Anubiuses lower down in the aquarium versus, you know, high up on the top of a rock. So that will keep it farther away from the light where it's darker. Another thing is if you saw Corey's video on par ratings, he was measuring the brightness of his light from different areas in the tank. And, you know, most people put their light in the middle of the tank. And so therefore, if you put your Anubius down here in the corner, it's going to get less light. And then finally, another trick would be if you have plants that can shade your Anubius. So floating plants, if you have a really tall bunch of Pogostemus stellatus, underneath them, they're going to take all the bright light and then your Anubius will be nice and happy underneath them. Tip number five is be realistic and expect that you're going to get algae at some point in your aquarium, especially in a newly set up aquarium. It's just kind of part of the cycle that experienced people know about because the tank is still immature. The plants a lot of times are still in shock. So, you know, you just move them, let's say from the fish store to your aquarium, the water parameters are different. Maybe you had to uproot it and now the roots are kind of like ooh, all broken and everything. During those stages, those plants are going to be growing a lot very much, which means they're also not consuming a lot of light and nutrients. Prime time for the algae to take advantage of the situation. And then finally, a lot of these plants are grown immersed or out of the water at fish farms. And therefore, when you put them, uh, submerge them into your tank and try to grow them underwater, immersed grown leaves are going to end up melting as they reabsorb those nutrients and then grow new submersed grown leaves. And melting leaves, Again, another prime target for algae. Make sure to remove any rotting, melted leaves, especially in a immature tank, because those are a food for algae. They're just gonna start growing on them. If you have stem plants where the bottom leaves ended up falling away, you can trim them and replant them. And now you have two plants for the price of one. And then finally, if you do have floating plants, like I recommended previously, they do tend to grow out of control pretty easily. So you're gonna have to do some regular maintenance and remove them because the floating plants can end up out competing the plants down below for shade and nutrients. And so you wanna make sure you have a healthy balance of both. Next time, I'm gonna be talking specifically about tank maintenance when you're trying to actively get rid of algae. But if you've missed my previous videos in the Algae Control for Beginners series, the playlist is over here. Plus, I am wearing the Aquarium Co-op Limited Edition Polo, which has a little green Murphy, the pufferfish embroidered on the side. That's our mascot. Check it out on aquariumcoop.com, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.